tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny. Round the clock snacker Emma flies to America to see the devastating consequences of extreme obesity. No one should live like that. In the feeding clinic, Robert swaps his bizarre diet. I can't believe I've got a chocolate bar for breakfast. For Emma's oversized portions. More grease. And both find it hard to swallow the truth. Can I get up? I feel sick. <sighs> Dr. Christian opens the bar. You got through about 10 pints of lager, totaling, give or take, 1,500 calories. And journalist and former anorexic Emma Wolf travels to Holland to find out about online treatments for eating disorders. The addiction button is really a button. You can't stop it. You're completely out of control then. Welcome to Super Size versus Super Skinny. Britain's waistlines are getting bigger. We're ranked as one of the top 10 heaviest countries in the world, along with the United States and Australia. Our weighty problems are starting in the playground. One in every three children leaving primary school are either overweight or obese. And it's not just the UK facing a big fat problem in the next generation. In the US, 17% of kids aged 2 to 19 are obese, and here in Texas, that figure is even higher. But there are some people here trying to do something about it. McAllen, Texas is America's fattest city, with obesity levels of nearly 39%. These children are all part of the city of McAllen's Run for Success program. This scheme aims to combat childhood obesity by getting kids active. Today's five-kilometer run is the culmination of the citywide fitness project. We have 10 sites and about 1,200 kids every day. And it's a recreation program where they go in and do a little homework, and then afterwards we give them an activity to do. In the process of it, I, I said, well, we would like to challenge them to do an event like this and run a 5K, three miles. And uh, we hoped to get about 10 kids per campus and ended up having over uh, 200 uh, that enrolled and stayed with the program throughout the 12 weeks. The number of children taking part in today's run shows how successful the initiative is. Are you ready for this? Yeah! Are you sure you're ready for this? Yeah! All right, then. Go. It's a proud moment for parents watching on. Have you got a child who's in this race today? Yes, I do. Who is it? Marlene Lara. Why do you think there's such a problem with obesity in children in this area in particular? Obesity, I think, it starts uh, with the... Uh, in our education as parents, yeah. and also economically. In McAllen, nearly 35% of people live below the poverty line. According to a Gallup poll, Americans living in poverty are more likely to suffer from health problems, including obesity. Guys, you've just finished. That was really good. How are you feeling? You look exhausted. Are you? Yes. As a reward for their hard work, it's fresh fruit and lollies. Many of the kids here have already signed up to running clubs and other activities locally. So for McAllen, it's a step in the right direction. This is such a great sight to see. Growing a strong and healthy body to set them up for life is so important for these kids. It's going to improve their self-esteem, it's going to improve their confidence, and it works wonders for behavioural problems too. This is the generation that we need to target because it's been predicted that if we don't change things now, this is the generation that may not outlive their parents. Anxious to ensure that we in the UK aren't eating ourselves into an early grave, Dr. Christian wants us to wake up and smell the muesli. He's brought together eight super sizers and eight super skinnies, whose disastrous diets are at opposite ends of the scales. Emma, come on over. So, for your time in the house, you are swapping with Robert. Hi, Emma. How are you? Not too bad, yeah. I'm good, thank you. What do you like to eat? I love to cook, but most of the time I'm so knackered from running around after the baby all day, it's too easy just to pick up the phone and order. Yeah. My husband comes home at like 8 o'clock and I'll have something again with him. Mm. It would fit probably two of my arms yeah. in one of yours. I think like the top of my arm's even bigger. Yeah. So I think that's like three of yours. <laughs> 
wow. Um, quite a bit of a shock, just because of the size of her. But she seems a really nice woman. Um, looking forward to like spending a couple of days, see what she eats and see how she eats. He's just so tiny, bless him. <laughs> looks more like a little boy rather than actually um, growing into a man. Robert rarely eats three meals a day, whereas Emma will eat dinner with the kids and then happily tuck in again later when her husband gets home. Although seemingly poles apart, I think we can find some healthier common ground. 24-year-old mum of one Emma Kane is a lager-guzzling, round-the-clock snacker with a 24-7 obsession. I think about food most of the time. I kind of plan my day around food. As soon as I've had my breakfast, I think, when I'm having lunch, what sort of time is that going to be? Again, I'll be thinking about tea after lunch, thinking, what am I going to cook? What am I going to do with it? Where am I going to be when I have tea? Emma's eternal appetite has her tipping the scales at a mighty 22 stone. Since baby Leah came along 20 months ago, Emma spends most days at home looking after her. With time on her hands, she's piled on 13 pounds this year alone from her constant grazing, lager-loving and lust for takeaways. Hello, can I place an order for delivery, please? Mom. Takeaway pizza is the worst one. I absolutely love it. Hello, how are you today? Thank you, yourself? I'm good, thank you. Enjoy the meal. Thank you, bye. If I know I have leftover pizza, I think I do dream about it. <laughs> I'm dreaming, sort of thinking, I know that that's there, so I'm waiting to have it the next day. Emma knows her diet's dreadful and constantly worries about passing her bad habits on to Leah. I sit away from Leah at breakfast, so she doesn't see what I'm eating. I don't want her eating that food. I know that she'll want the food if she sees it, so I kind of try and hide away from her a little bit. Now I'm ready to change my life, Now I have to, for, for my family. While Emma is concerned about the amount she's putting away every day, the opposite is true of our super skinny. I can go for six to eight hours before I get really hungry without any food. Eight stone two Robert Musgrove from Peterborough is a five foot nine super skinny whose can't be bothered to eat attitude is affecting his job. I work for a wholesaler's cash and carry. There's a quite a lot of heavy lifting to do. Some days I do find it easy, some days I don't. They're quite heavy, aren't they? Just a bit. Unlike his job, Robert's eating routine just doesn't stack up. On the rare occasions he can be bothered to eat in the morning, he grabs a child-sized box of cereal. But his first food is often as late as 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he's a creature of very bad habits. What bread do you want, mate? Do you want a no. baguette? Do you want a square sandwich bread or do you want a round roll? Uh, can I have a white round roll, please, Jim? White round. Better butter on it, back. Yes, please, mate. Five days out of seven, I have convenience food. Uh, it's quite good, really, because it's quick and simple to eat. His dreadful diet has also given 20-year-old Robert a serious health scare. There was uh, one time at my old job where I just got really lightheaded and then tight chest and everything, and I got taken to A&E about it, and they put it down to, like, not eating anything during the day. It was quite frightening. Um, it could have been a warning sign to say that I need to start eating more, but... I haven't really taken much notice of it, really. I've eaten a little bit more, but that's about it. Robert's awful diet is also affecting the way he looks. Uh, the way that I feel about my body is I'm a skinny runt. There's nothing really to me. Normally, on a, like if I go out or anything, I tend to wear a long sleeve top due to the fact that burns in my elbows stick out, burns in the tops of my shoulders stick out, shoulder blades. His friends aren't too impressed with Robert's physique either. He's just skin and bones. There's nothing to him. I've seen more meat on a garden rake, to be honest. With his self-esteem at an all-time low, his love life is as non-existent as his meals. The last time I had a girlfriend, you're talking probably about three years ago, um, it would be nice to have somebody else be with somebody, um, but cos I don't like myself, then... Uh, I don't think anybody else would. Before Super Size and Super Skinny enter the feeding clinic for two days intensive treatment, Dr Christian's giving Emma a Super Size kick start. He's sending her to America to witness the terrifying consequences of a lifetime of eating junk. The 
This is it, it's quarter past eight. I'm at Heathrow, waiting to go. Really nervous, really excited, but really good and really positive. I can't wait to get started. Awaiting Emma's arrival in Indiana is a morbidly obese grandmother who suffers from a catalogue of diet-related health problems. My name is Stacy Smith. I'm 48 years old and I weigh over 32 stone. Dr. Christian hopes that Stacy will give Emma an insight into what life could be like if she keeps piling on the pounds. Twenty-two stone round-the-clock snacker Emma Kane has arrived in Texas. She's here to see the frightening future she could be facing if she doesn't cut down on her fatty diet. She's on her way to meet grandmother Stacy Smith. I'm 48 years old and I weigh over 32 stone. It's a struggle. 12 plus zero is what? Stacy's raising her six-year-old granddaughter, but it's hard because she's morbidly obese. Stacy has major health problems that stem from a history of bad eating and from complications following the birth of her daughter 21 years ago. I have lupus, diabetes, and lipedema. The lipedema is where it's a lot of fluid that builds up in your body and you gotta try to have therapy to try to push the fluid out. Dr. Christian first met Stacy last year when he visited her home of Evansville, Indiana, which topped the polls in 2011 as America's fattest town. She was winched into a bariatric ambulance or jumbulance designed to cope with patients weighing up to 100 stone it takes her to one of three weekly appointments at the local hospital. Did you ever imagine you'd need all of this? No. The lymphedema has made Stacy's weight problem even worse, but she was 21 stone even before her daughter was born. Virtually the same weight Emma is now. Dr. Christian doesn't want Emma to end up with these terrible health problems. Coming to America to meet Stacy could be the most important trip of her life. I am feeling quite nervous about whoever I'm going to meet today, but I'm really excited at the same time, and I'm hoping for a shock factor, something to really sort of show me that I need to change. Hello. Nice to meet you, I'm nice Emma. Nice to meet you, I'm Stacey. Have a seat. Thank you. So, um, what sort of health issues and things then are you facing at the moment? I got, a, you know, a six-year-old granddaughter, and it's hard for me to do things with her. Yeah. Despite living 4,000 miles apart, it doesn't take long for Emma and Stacy to find common ground. Your granddaughter that you want to do things more with, I mean, right. I've got a 20-month-old. Oh, and, do you? Wow. Yeah, and she, you know, she's keeping me on my toes. It changes things, doesn't yeah. it? If it wasn't really for her, you know, I was ready to give up, but I try to hang yeah. on for her. At 32 stone, Stacy finds it exhausting to move even short distances around the house. Come on back here. <laughs> she faces a day-to-day -day struggle to keep mobile. Apart from the contact with her granddaughter and medical team, she lives a solitary existence. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Stacy's keen to show Emma the realities of everyday life when you're 32 stone. All this is nothing but fluid. How do you get shoes? Well, I have to have my shoes made. They mold my feet and see how big the swelling they got. Then they make my shoes. Would you love to just be able to go out and pick your shoes? And... Oh, oh, yeah. I would love to do that. Her immobility and her legs as well. And the position, like... <sighs> no one should live like that. If moving around inside the house is hard enough, walking a few steps to get outside is an epic journey. Oh, fine. Emma's about to see just how difficult it is for Stacy to do something normal. They're going to pick up Stacy's granddaughter to go to the park. <laughs> what? Right. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, cozy. All good? 
It's only the food that's fast when you get to this size. You don't think I believe you, do you? But Emma's about to get a surprise. Dr Christian has arrived in Evansville to check up on her. What is that? <laughs> you thought I was a weirdo, didn't you? I was thinking, who's this just come and sat next to me? And Stacey, nice to see you hey. again. How are you doing? All right, how are you doing? Tell me, do things seem very far removed from your life? In, in some instances, there's similarities that's occurring, and I can see that uh, if I don't change my ways, if I don't stop what I'm doing, then I, I'm just going to be in exactly the same position. Wow, you realise that. I, yeah, that really hit home today. And it's that sort of dependence on other people and just yeah. it's a struggle to get about that means you can't just spontaneously go off and do stuff that you want to do, exactly. can you, Stacey? It's, it's become so much and harder. I've found that in my own life already. I've got my husband and my baby to think about and I need to be about and active and healthy for them. Right, we're here. Come on, Stacey, Emma, let's go. After delivering Stacey and her granddaughter safely home, Dr Christian wants to give Emma some food for thought for her journey back to the UK. I want you to have a little think about everything that you've seen and done here and sort of put it together into a little package in your memory that you're going to use and think about your eating habits now. Why are you eating the way that you do? What's going on? What's driving you? That's what I want you to work out over the next few days until I see you again. All right? Yes. Obviously, it's been lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for letting me into your home and everything and obviously meeting your beautiful granddaughter. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Good. It was real nice. You take care. I will. No. It's so good to meet you. No, me you too. I've just got to change. I have to do it now because I just can't let myself get to that point. I can't let my daughter see, even just the way I am now, but to get to the point that poor Stace is in, just... That's not fair on anybody in any family. If I could give Emma one piece of advice, that would be, you know, trying to lose that weight. Because I don't want to see her gain any more weight where it's going to cause a lot of problems. Emma's back in the UK and about to check in to the feeding clinic. Joining her is super skinny Robert, who just can't be bothered to eat. Before they get started on their two-day diet swap, Dr. Christian wants to see them both, starting with tiny warehouse worker Robert. Weighing in at just eight stone two pounds, Robert survives on a diet of pretty much nothing. His constant meal skipping means he undereats by 1,200 calories a day. So just doing a quick analysis of your food diary, your daily calorie consumption on average was about 1,300 calories a day. A six-year-old boy's is about what yours is. And that's really not good, is it? No. Given the weight that you are, you're at significant risk of a relatively minor illness for someone being a major illness for you. Something as simple as a diarrhea infection kills you. Really. Until somebody puts it in front of you and shows you how much or how little that I actually eat, um, it's, it's not until then when it hits you. While Robert needs to take more time to eat, Emma has no such problem. Weighing in at 22 stone, she's a staggering 11 stone overweight for her 5 foot 6 frame. The overall daily calorie intake that you're on is enough for two women. You're on 4,000 calories a day. That will mean you will continue to put on weight more and more and more because it's way above what your body actually needs, OK? The good news is that many calories is quite easy, actually, to cut down in places without you noticing it too much. It's time for Super Size and Super Skinny to swap diets. First up, the most important meal of the day, breakfast. Wow, that's huge. Is that it? <laughs> yep. Emma's day often starts with a fry-up. On the menu, two sausages, two fried eggs, two rashers of bacon, fried mushrooms, baked beans, two pieces of buttered white toast, all washed down with a pint of cola. Enjoy. Thank you. Try and be full. 
when Robert can be bothered to open the cupboard, he sits down to a child-sized box of cereal with semi-skimmed milk. And that's exactly what Emma's served up. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to eat all this. Have a good go. Oh, I definitely will. Breakfast was massive, <laughs> and that's putting it nicely. Do you feel sick? No, I just feel really, really full, really bloated. I can't believe I've sat there eating a tiny bowl of cereals and you've eaten all that. Um, I could have just easily tucked into that. I was so hungry. Full up after just a few mouthfuls of Emma's enormous breakfast, four hours later, Robert can only dream of hunger pains because lunch is served. It's Robert's chicken and cheese microwave wrap with no drink versus Emma's double burger and chips with a pint of cola. Do you really just survive on that tiny portion? To be honest, when it gets put in front of you like that, it is quite shocking how small it is. If Emma's greasy, oversized portions have defeated Robert, her supersized supping habits could leave him unsteady on his feet. Dr Christian's opening the bar, and he's about to call last orders on Emma's unhealthy drinking habits. I'm going to show you about calories and alcohol. I've got some cards here with different calorie values on, all right? And what I want you to do is put them in front of the drink you think they belong to. So, you've gone for the most calories, goes for our super sweet alcohol pop, and the least calories is the shot of whiskey. Well, let me tell you now, you're absolutely right. Tot of whiskey has fewest calories of the lot of them. Emma has also correctly guessed that a measure of gin is 85 calories and a small glass of red wine is 100 calories. But you'll never guess which one she's got wrong. It's the lager that has the highest calories and you look suitably shocked by that. I wasn't expecting that, no. Alco pops can vary, but on average there's 150 calories in each bottle. But lager, Emma's favourite, can add up to an eye-watering 200 calories a pint. I then tell you that in your food diary that you got through about 10 pints of lager, almost in a night, totaling, give or take, 1,500 calories. If you tend to do this roughly on a weekly basis, you will get through 521 pints in a year, which is the equivalent of, turn around, six kegs of beer a year, which, in calorie terms, is the equivalent of 19.5 kilos of sugar a year. I never really thought about it, haven't it? I can't believe it. The recommended limit of alcohol units across a week is 21 for men and 14 for women. Emma's currently drinking a hangover-inducing average of 23 units per week. Drinking more than the recommended daily amount over a period of time is actually bad for a number of reasons. We know there's significant calories and it causes weight gain. If you're overweight, you're actually also at risk of liver disease. Alcohol directly causes liver disease because of the toxic byproducts it produces when you break it down. Liver disease is reversible up to a point until you get to a condition called cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is an irreversible condition where the liver really can no longer work. And I'm going to show you a picture here of a man with cirrhosis. And that's not a fat man, that's a thin man with a huge volume of fluid, possibly 15 litres or more, that's collected in his abdomen because of his liver failure. So now Emma's seen the extreme damage drinking excess alcohol can do. Dr Christian's keen to share a positive note. Let me tell you the good news. If you were to cut out just the lager, you'd lose two stone over the course of a year. That's quite easy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was really shocked and to think that, that I actually put that in my body and it, I just couldn't believe it. In the feeding clinic, 22 stone round the clock snacker Emma and 8 stone 2 pounds can't be bothered to eat Robert are swapping their terrible diets in a bid to shock them into changing their ways. Yeah, fine before. So far, Emma's been left unsatisfied 
with a child-sized portion of cereal. Lunch wasn't so hearty either. A chicken and cheese microwave wrap. She's not impressed. Do you really just survive on that tiny portion? Robert was defeated by Emma's fry-up. I'm now starting to struggle. But he did give her lunch of double burger, chips and a pint of cola a good go. Oh, my goodness. Now dinner is served. I've got nothing. Perhaps not. I have to give you this food now, don't I? Unfortunately. I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> Robert's got chilli, lettuce, cheese, mayonnaise, two tortilla wraps, rice and two pints of cola. Emma gets a pint of cola. I've got a laugh, otherwise I'll cry. I've got loads. You can't have nothing for dinner. I eat way too much, but you've got to eat. How much do you spend a week on shopping, then? You'll probably spend maybe over 150 on just food in total. That's I over six times the amount I spend a week on food. That's crazy. I'm actually disgusted in the amount I eat. I'm sorry, I can't eat anymore. I'm, at, I'm full to the brim. I really am. That the meal for dinner was massive. I, I felt full before I'd even started. I'm absolutely starving on those two tiny little portions. Um, I can't believe it. I'm actually, I'm actually really annoyed with him because he can't, he, you can't eat like that. There's, there's no way you can't have dinner. I'm smacking. <laughs> with one day left in the feeding clinic, Starving Emma is already on a knife edge dealing with Robert's tiny portions. But facing food at all is a major issue for the thousands of people in the UK who suffer from an eating disorder. Emma Wolfe is an author, journalist and former anorexia sufferer. Her regular column in The Times has secured her a following of eating disorder sufferers and their families. So far, she's investigated developing anorexia during pregnancy. She came out like a little four-pound dot. I felt so guilty. And instead of it driving me to put weight on, it sort of made me want to self-punish more. Men with eating disorders. For many years, I would binge and purge seven, eight times a day. And coping with anorexia later in life. Starving my body for so many years, I developed osteoporosis, so I've lost four inches in height. That's had such a devastating effect, mentally and physically. There are many ways to treat eating disorders, including cognitive behavioural therapy and counselling. Emma visited a psychiatrist to help her deal with her anorexia. I had an amazing psychiatrist for about eight years, and it's good in that it gives you a space to talk about things that are worrying you. It, it gave me a, a space to talk about things that were worrying me. But no one can do it for you. No one can eat for you. No one can gain weight for you. You have to do that. In Europe, a pioneering treatment is available. It's an online therapy for treating eating disorders, which can be accessed via the internet 24 hours a day. To find out more, Emma's come to Amsterdam to meet Dr. Bart Schreiken, who runs the programme, in collaboration with the University of Amsterdam. So, Dr. Schriekens, what is Interapy? Interapy is the first online uh, treatment organization uh, for people with psychological problems. So, um, we treat 100% online, and, and we do this also together with other organizations who see people, but at Interapy, we never see a client. We all only have contact via the internet. You never see a client? Never. The, cl the client and the therapist never meet? Never. It's interesting. Yeah. The sufferer initially fills in an online questionnaire, which is followed by a telephone consultation. They're then assigned an online treatment plan and access to a private psychologist. The patient can continue to communicate with their online therapist using text-based chat. In therapy treats most eating disorders, but not anorexia nervosa, as this requires closer observation. So how would you go about treating a patient with an eating disorder? So what we try is to, by very technical, getting through the vicious circle of um, eating, um, uh, slimming, uh, purging and, uh, and craving again. Yeah, um, try to break that cycle. Break that cycle by 
getting grip on that, replace uh, this eating disorder by other things in your life. This innovative service is anonymous, instant, and most importantly, available day and night. One person who's found it life-changing is Jessica, who's struggled with binge eating and bulimia. Eating disorder started when I was five years old. My weight always fluctuated really strongly. My lowest weight was 11 stones. My highest weight was 18 stones. The, the addiction button is really a button. You can't stop it. You're completely out of control then. Uh, the online therapy is um, that easy that uh, you can do it from your comfort zone at home. And you could log on every time of the day, during the night, 24 hours a day if you wanted. It was actually a friend, a dear friend, who told you, no, it's gonna be okay. It worked for me perfectly. The sufferer is set practical tasks that are designed to confront the traumatic event that triggered their eating disorder. This could include trying to eat some snacks during the week or even socializing more to build confidence. For Jessica, her homework was learning to look at her body more positively by taking a regular, long, hard look in the mirror. So as part of your treatment, can you show me how the mirror therapy works? Yeah, I can show you. Okay. It's, um, yeah, well, you have to stand in front of a mirror, of course. Right. And you have to say positive things right. about yourself. Yeah, and that's really hard. <laughs> do you do this clothed or naked? Yeah, naked or in your underwear. OK. It was actually naked. So it's naked. quite hard? Yeah, it's quite hard, yeah. yeah. Because with clothes on, you think, oh, mm. Sometimes you've got a good day and sometimes yeah. you've got a bad day. Yeah. So I actually I wrote for a few days what I thought yeah. over looking in the mirror. And then I got a list that I think, actually, it's not that bad. This online therapy might not be for everyone, but it certainly proved a useful tool for some sufferers of eating disorders. And it can provide life-changing results. We thought that sufferers wanted to be in the room with their therapist, that patients wanted to be in the room with their therapist, and that it was very cold to offer treatment online. But actually, the patients themselves don't seem to feel that. So I'm wondering whether it's something that we'll be seeing more and more of in the UK in the future. If you're worried that you or someone you might know may have an eating disorder, please speak to your GP or go to channel4.com forward slash supersize for more advice. It's day two in the feeding clinic. Round-the-clock snacker Emma has a rumbling tummy after being served up just a pint of cola for last night's dinner. I'm so hungry. I better have breakfast. For breakfast, she's swapping her four fried sausages, mushrooms and two buttered white rolls for Robert's two fun-sized chocolate bars. And she's not happy. I can't believe I've got a chocolate bar for breakfast. So why would you go for an easy option and just have a chocolate bar for breakfast? Just probably pure, pure laziness, really. Just not wanting to make myself a bowl of cereal or something like that. It's pretty easy to make cereal or toaster, isn't it, for breakfast? <laughs> As that is really lazy, isn't it? Mm. Emma might not be happy, but Robert's not impressed either with another oversized breakfast. More grease. Yeah. Is every breakfast fatty? I'm an emotional eater and um, I don't feel much love at the moment. <laughs> I was so annoyed with him. I just looked at my plate and I was like, there's no way. That's it for breakfast. Lunchtime and moods aren't improving. Oh my God. It's Robert's mini bowl of porridge with semi-skin milk and sugar versus Emma's ham, cheese and pickle sandwich on white bread with a family bag of crisps, white chocolate chip cookie and a pint of cola. It's nice to see something that's not greasy for lunch, but that is a massive portion, again. You say that my diet's appalling, yes, I agree with you there, um, but I do think yours is quite appalling as well. I've had a full English breakfast, two sausage butties, and then uh, fast food as well in the space of a couple of days. So your diet is quite shocking as well as mine. That's going to be wasted again, isn't it? Unfortunately. Oh, God. If Robert thought lunch was a struggle, will his final meal in the feeding clinic finish him off? How many lagers? Six. 
Emma normally drinks alcoholic lager, but for the purposes of this swap, Robert is having an alcohol-free alternative. But don't be fooled, non-alcoholic lagers can still be fattening. While Robert gets to grip with the huge volume of liquid calories, plus a large, thick-based pepperoni pizza, Emma gets two very small ladles of tomato pasta. And it proves too much and too little for Robert and Emma. Can't eat that little. Can I get up? I feel sick. I don't. <sighs> oh, my God. <sighs> After like, eating as much of a pizza as I could, uh, I had a couple of gobfuls of lager and, um, like, I felt, I felt so, so sick. I w went outside and I, I was, like, heaving um, and it wasn't a nice feeling. I did feel quite bad for him. Um, it wasn't very nice. It's a dramatic end to their time in the feeding clinic, but have the tears and takeaways finally made them realise that their dreadful diets have got to change? Your diet needs to be a bit healthier. I feel really sick after like, eating and drinking that. Yeah, definitely. My, my diet's not great, but um, your body's not used to eating either, is it? No. My diet is absolutely diabolical. I can't believe that what my diet has been like after like, seeing everything today. I've now got to uh, move on from, from that and look forward to the future. There's no more excuses for any of us now. We've both realised where we've been going wrong and what we need to do, and we both basically need to put that into practice. We need to make sure that we sort ourselves out and do the things that we need to do. Well, you've put me off pizza anyway, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Emma and Robert's meal swap has been hugely beneficial. Swapping their awful diets has really hammered home how much they need to change. Their time in the feeding clinic is nearly over. But before they go, Dr Christian gives them their eating plans. This is now healthy eating for you for what I hope will be the rest of your lives, OK? Robert, key points for you is breaking bad habits. Also structure, finding time in the day to eat three proper meals a day plus snacks, OK? Emma, this one's for you. And really, the key words for you are emotional eating. Feed your physical hunger, not your emotional hunger. OK, and best of luck, guys. Emma's diet plan will reduce her daily calories by half to 2,000 calories a day, the recommended daily amount for a woman. Her high-fat takeaways will be replaced with smaller portions, and she'll eat a balanced diet of foods that are filling without being fatty to prevent her overeating. Robert's diet plan will gradually increase to double his current calorie intake a day to 2,800 calories. This allows for the extra energy he needs for his manual job. So it's bye-bye sugary snacks and hello slow-release energy foods, like brown bread, rice and pasta, with plenty of fresh fruit and veg. I definitely had a good uh, kick up the bum by Dr Christian and Emma. I've realised that I can eat larger meals, can push myself to the boundaries, so it can be done, I can change. I've learnt so much from Robert. I've eaten what he's eaten, and I feel really sorry for him that he was surviving on that food for so long. And also learnt that I did survive on it, so I know that I don't have to eat as much as I do. It's been nearly two months since round-the-clock snacker Emma and can't be bothered to eat Robert left the feeding clinic. And it's time to see if they've followed Dr Christian's advice and ditched their disastrous diets. I'm really excited, um, nervous at the same time, but I just can't wait to know how much I've lost, basically. I feel like I've gained weight because I'm eating a lot more food uh, than what I was doing. So hopefully uh, I have put on weight. Now, you, I think it's fair to say, we're a bit of a lazy eater. Tell me about the different types of food that you're eating now. Um, I'm eating more fresh fish, butchery meat, and trying more, more spicy food as well. And how are you feeling in yourself about all this? My mates notice that I'm more confident and stuff like that. I'll start talking to people um, and other bits and pieces, so my confidence levels have gone up. 
This is all really good news, but remember, it's not a quick process. It certainly doesn't happen overnight. And you had an awful lot of bad habits that you had to break and then new ones to introduce. But it sounds like you're well up and running now, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah, definitely. So what's the secret? Eating food. It's not hard, really, is it? No. You admitted yourself that you sort of thought about food all the time, you dreamt about food. Has that changed? I'm planning meals and thinking about it in a healthier way, rather than craving foods and waking up thinking I want a fry-up or something like that. So that's really good. Now, I had to give you a bit of a talking to about your beer. You loved a beer or two or three, didn't you? Yeah. Are you still enjoying your beers or have you cut them down? I've cut them down pretty much None at all. When I do have a drink, I have rosé wine and diet lemonade. So I'm trying to just stay clear of the beer <laughs> completely. Now, you've made some pretty drastic changes, haven't you, altogether? This can't have been easy, can it? Do you sort of lust after the old ways or not really? I do a little bit, but you just push through and just don't want to go back to that place. I want to keep moving forward and losing the weight until I'm happy. So you're pretty sure you've lost some weight? Yeah. Good. Well, we will find out. Time for Emma and Robert to be reunited. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Oh, you look amazing. And yourself? Oh. God, you look so different. And you? Oh, you've done so well, haven't you? How do you feel? I feel great. I feel really good. I'm really proud of myself. Uh, you, I think I think you'll be proud of what I'm eating now. Uh, if we had to do a swap, I reckon you'd be like, yeah, need some food. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me interrupt you guys. Nice to see each other again. Yes. yes, this is brilliant. I think you two are changed people, and I absolutely mean that. It's been, you look so different from the rather pale, sickly-looking chap I welcomed into the feeding clinic. Really, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. And you are glowing. It's a cliche, but you are. You're glowing. To be fair to both of you, you had some really hard work ahead of you. You had bad, terrible bad habits that you had to break. And changing behaviour is not easy. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of um, kicking up the bum, shall we say, along the way. But you've done it. It's only been a short time, but to be honest, both of you have made me proud. Robert, if we start off with you, you think you've gained weight? You've gained a very respectable two pounds. You've put on two inches around your thigh and you've put on two inches around your chest and that is noticeable. It takes time. So keep going. Think about in six months or a year's time of you doing like this and I think you'll be only be putting on near a stone or so, which will make a massive difference to you. So what do you think of that? Well done. That's brilliant. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Are you pleased? I am pleased that I put on weight. A um, little bit disappointed that it's not a little bit more. Right. A gain is better than nothing, isn't it? Absolutely. It means the changes that you've made are working. For me, I'm completely happy that you are on the right track and will continue to do so. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you. Emma, what about you? In an ideal world, what would you like to have lost? I would like to have lost around the stone mark. Maybe just don't really? Care. That's a lot. Yeah. You sure? Oh, Emma. I don't know. <laughs> you haven't lost a stone. You've lost one stone seven pounds. Far, far more than a stone. You've lost a stone and a half. Oh, my God. Are you please? Yeah, I really am. <laughs> and you've lost six inches off your tummy. You didn't think you'd do that, did you? <laughs> no. And I'm sorry for teasing you in that way. <laughs> but you've done so, so well. I am really, really happy for you. So very, very well done indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I'm so happy. I didn't realise I'd done that well, so I'm really happy. I'm quite happy that I've put on two inches on my size and my chest, uh, which is quite a big difference for somebody my size. So hopefully I'm just at that uh, tipping point now where I'll start putting weight on. It's really important for me that I'm doing this for myself and for my family and I feel like I've turned a big corner so I'm just really looking forward to the future. It's not just about what the scales are saying, it's made a difference to my body, uh, it's made a difference to my confidence levels. Hopefully I should put on about a stone within the next year so I'm looking forward to it, the future's bright. If you're interested in taking part in a future series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, please go to channel4.com forward slash take part for an application form. 
Next week in the feeding clinic, it's pizza-loving Thomas versus overactive, under-eating Linda. I can see where I'm going wrong, because I'm in action for eight, four people. Dr Christian returns to McAllen, Texas, America's fattest town, looking for signs of hope in a city in crisis. It's scary when your doctor says, if you don't start exercising and changing your lifestyle, you're going to die. And Emma Wolfe's investigation into eating disorders looks at the pressures on teenage girls. When someone becomes curvy, it's all of a sudden she's gone fat. Those fabulous Baker brothers are putting their reputations on the line, serving up their brand new series over on More 4 next. Not such elegance and fine dining here on Channel 4 in an interesting insight into British culture. The fried chicken shop, life in a daze in just a minute.